Hello. So, this talk started out as a rant in my mind, triggered by the use of the word groomer, targeted at the extreme left of our country. Eventually, see, when I do these videos, it is very important to me not to be manipulative. If you have gotten to this video after a long spiral of everybody agreeing with you and on YouTube, of face after face of people supplying you with information again and again and again that only reinforce what it is you believe already. If you've gotten to my face that way, you need to put up a red flag because if you are only taking in information that feeds what you already have, you're not growing, you're just being driven. I know it's hard to recognize that. So when in this video started out as a rant, my thinking immediately, my red flags say, that is exactly what the algorithm wants you to do to succeed. Put in your title words like destroy or ruin or whatever the big keywords are now today, this morning. Be energetically and obstinately opposed to something. Influence those who watch you to believe what you are saying to get likes and shares. If that's how you got here, you need to be aware of it. Because that is how we, in this day and age, stall the growth of our consciousness. So I took a couple extra weeks. I chilled out on it. And I expanded it. Meditated on it. Prayed on it. And this is the result of that. See, now the original rant was somebody on the right ranting about the people on the left and the strange place that they are at right now when it comes to sexual confusion. I understand the term groomer in its negative, and I apologize to any pet people who take care of pets. I, I don't uh, imagine it's a pleasurable thing to have this kind of meme growing up around your title. But the idea that there is sexual grooming going on on the far left when it comes to our children is infuriating and also can lead to that blinding bias that I just warned against. That's the kind of thing that fuels the algorithm in its current state. My goal is to help show anybody and everybody who will listen how to break that algorithm. If you got here and you don't understand the rhythm, the algorithm, there are excellent books on the subject. Johan Hari's Stolen Focus is one of my favorites on the subject. Understand that we got here via that algorithm because it is what we want. The people who design the algorithm and use it know exactly what it does, but also know that it is what we want. And if we are going to change that so it's more beneficial for us, we have to consciously change the algorithm. You can't come to my video expecting to be fed in your own personal entrenched beliefs and go forward better armed. My goal is to show you that that is what's killing us. The definition of consciousness is an organic process, mimetically driven or fueled, leading to that part of you which is a paying attention to me now, right now. That focus that shifted after I just manipulated you. That is the organic process. That is you. That is the part of you that I am trying to explain so that anybody who understands it can 
change their, the spiritualists nowadays call it changing their frequency or changing your energy. Look, the best way to change your frequency or energy, I'm not sure this matches up with physics, but it's an understandable position. The best way to change that from constantly ruined, constantly sad, constantly angry, frustrated, to change it from that to progress to actual growth is to understand it is mimetically driven or mimetically fueled, depending on your use or being used by the memes in our society. See, the original source of this talk was the usage of a term, groomer, from somebody on the left or on the right against somebody on the right or on the left. Okay. Used by the right against the left. Okay. I take neither extreme position. I'm trying to combat both extreme positions. I believe wholeheartedly that what is being seen as grooming in the far left is the use of broken empathy, a damaged form of empathy that is pervasive in our species right now, that is everywhere. The term groomer in its negative connotations, in its, its hate speech use, is, is used for the deplorable use of understanding our world to damage or better utilize the innocent. See, grooming has been a thing in humans for as long as there have been, there's been consciousness. People have been groomed to be president, CEO, business owners, leaders of all kinds. Grooming is something we do in order to raise our children. But the negative connotation of it is that we are using it to raise the innocent so that they could be better used to suit our dark purposes. And I don't believe that is the pervasive sense on the far left. I think it's far more likely that it is a damaged empathy that is creating that situation. Because if you take the negative connotations of groomer, it is essentially our using an adult understanding of how this world works to negatively affect an innocent individual, a child. And that does not only take sexual forms, which is what we're kind of seeing on the left with, with puberty enhancing or, or blocking and, and even the consideration of surgical alterations on a body that isn't even completed growing, that is growing in a world that is utilizing a damaged sense of empathy. That is harm. So I understand the usage of it. But if you just take that, that one element out, the, 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 the sexual element out, what other ways have we groomed to cause harm? Have we groomed to cause harm when it comes to racism? How many generations back does the grooming for racism affect our species? At what point is that blame even so diluted that there's nowhere to put it anymore? And racism is doing harm and foolish in just the same ways. Grooming for racism better allows you to utilize that innocence as it matures. That's all there is to it. So what other forms are there? How about indoctrination? How about indoctrination? I have asked in previous videos, and I'm going to ask again, do you think that it is possible for the human race and mass all together to have collectively missed the point? I believe that this is true. I see evidence of it everywhere. But do you believe that that is possible? 
Look, this talk has the potential to absolutely offend anybody and everybody. The only way you can get past that is to ask that question. Do you believe it's possible that humanity en masse has missed the point? Because that's where we're about to go. Understand the state of consciousness for the last 2,000 years. Now, the secret history of the world has holds within it. They have access to far more data than I do, but they one of their precepts is that the world is hardening away from spirituality into materialism, away from idealism and into materialism. And that hardening is natural, and it is the plan that we will have to endure this period of materialism in order to understand the age of spirit or idealism that will follow it. That somehow we have to manage to survive this long age of materialism and come out on the other side stronger spiritually, better able to understand reality. For us, time has gone on. It went on pretty consistently for a very long time. What we now call stagnation. Until about 1685 with the Enlightenment. This goes on until 1815, where everything about the world is starting to change in the consciousness of thinking human beings who are recognizing the world they live in and trying to explain it with only the consciousness that's been built up through this stagnation. One thing that is never talked about during that protracted period of stagnation is that for a lot of the world, the church was the established power. That was the establishment. Some will say that it is the reason why there was stagnation to begin with. And the Enlightenment's break from that is what allowed for our society and consciousness to take the form that it does presently. And that is borne out in the historical progression in the evidence of historical progression, the arrow of time. Because shortly after the Enlightenment, we get the theory of evolution, our growth by natural selection. See now, up until this point, throughout the Enlightenment, there, were, there was a, 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 a basis for thinking that by Discovery in nature, we are explaining and coming to understand the, the, the makeup, the build, the, the vital essence that is our creator. That by examining what he ha has been created, we can understand the creator. The problem here is human beings in this current state of evolution in this current state of understanding can only perceive God one way and that is through projection. It is by definition, God is by definition the unknown. So we take what we have and we project into the rest. That goes back to everybody that is not directly influenced by divinity whether it's the apostles or Paul or preachers or popes or saints or salesmen, whoever. The only way in this current form of consciousness that we can understand God is by projecting into the existence of God. And during the Enlightenment, this was frustrating for scientific-minded people because along with that ignorance that has to be supplanted by projection 
comes all of these weird things like ethers and, and energies and things that don't fit into scientific discovery. So we get proclamations from scientific thinkers that no more, we're not doing this anymore. These silly ideas that we have from projecting into our understanding of God don't make sense in the actual physics of our world. Understand the effect that has on us. We went from understanding God through the creation to being frustrated by God, which isn't actually being frustrated by God. It's being frustrated by a limited understanding because of our perspective, our position. We weren't frustrated by God's input. We were frustrated by our perception of it. Leading to Darwin and Wallace, the co-announcement of evolution, our growth as a planet based on natural selection, which led to the first discoveries of our two first replicators on this planet, genes and memes. But because of that frustration caused by our projection, throughout the Enlightenment, instead of explaining and finally giving us a grounding and a, a, a starting point to actually understand that creation, it spawned a new religion. That new religion is macroevolution. Billions of years of evolution is what led to us. Understand that that frustration leads con consciousness is continuously it's an organic process it will happen as long as you are conscious whether it's driven or fueled is up to you especially now that you know but it is continually growing look at the perspective they had to draw on there was over a hundred years of just frustration and here they found something that could easily describe, explain why we were frustrated. Because there is no God, there is evolution. So now, not only do we not have to factor that stuff into our research, it's seen as superstition, so it's actually harmful to intellectual pursuit. To hold superstition is harmful to intellectual pursuit. So we took their discovery and we started our own religion. And it has become the most influential religion we have ever had on this planet. It is the fastest growing, it is the furthest reaching, and I believe it was started in a misconception. It eliminates entire ages on this planet. It allows us to project into the unknown in a new way. And boy, did it, did it do that. Look at the way it has changed our stories from pre-evolution and its discovery to post-evolution and its discovery. Do you think you could tell somebody in the 1500s the story of Star Trek? Do you think you could tell them about Stargate or, or, or any of the science fiction of today? Do you think you could, they could see these stories and comprehend them? Our consciousness growth changed at that point. How we interpret the facts we discover changed. Instead of glorifying any creator, it was instead used to bolster a religion that's purpose was to get fairy tales out of reason thinking. Darwin himself accumulated data for 20 years after his discovery because he wanted to be absolutely sure in his own reasoning, in his own evidence. I have talked about the weird experience that is discovery because I personally think that the discovery of 
the function of consciousness should belong to Richard Dawkins. But once we make a discovery in philosophy, psychology, which I call memetics, um, in any pursuit, once we've discovered a thing, we have to discover a way to explain the thing. That explanation is entirely influenced by our own memetic structure in our consciousness. For Dawkins, his explanation of his discovery of memetics was entirely evolutionary. It was entirely built in that structure that started to be frustrated in the Enlightenment and perceived itself to have been victorious over the creation story in Darwin and Wallace. In some ways, you can kind of see the mimetic comfort that this could give the individual thinker. The ability to project into something that is something other than a God that will hold you responsible. The ability to project into something as your consciousness grows that has no implications for afterlife, no implications for what happens to consciousness after it's done in this form of existence. Understand why it is that it was such a successful meme for this religion to start, why it started, and for it to grow, why it grew. Look at some of the ramifications of that growth, of having that option. What has happened to the state of faith in our world today? We have simultaneously the best argument against faith and the most widespread, strangely used faith. We have enormous megachurches that are, are built on the idea that we can spiritually grow beyond what we could have been otherwise. What Julian Jaynes called the elevation of spirit-based ego, which is the ascension of Paul over Jesus. Also understand that Paul could in no way interpret what God was like other than by projection. There's no other means for us to observe and understand it at, at his point in history. At his point in history, there's no other way other than he's convinced there is God. He's convinced he's working for God. Beyond that, he has to project into his understanding of what God is. In all of his writings, that is us. That is humanity. And now I am a, probably upsetting the faith side of, of, of anybody who follows me. Also look at the state of faith when, it, when these huge churches, how, what percentage of all people who have faith is praying for this to just be over with? They have given up. What percentage is that at, I wonder? There is strong indication that there is work to be done in this existence as it is now, but the faith side, by and large, is praying for rapture or the end of it all. That's defeated. If that is the state of your organization of consciousness, that is defeat. That is the lack of growth. You are not, if you are proselytizing or if you are indoctrinating from a position of defeat, are you causing harm? What potential is there in that initial stagnation? If I have successfully proselytized and brought you to faith, now, welcome to the team, brother or sister. Let's hope the rapture comes soon. What harm is being done there? 
what misunderstandings have led to that harm being done and on what scale is it being done is that the source for why it is that when i joined your team i joined the team that doesn't believe we should fix our planet how is that possible i said earlier that i think one of the problems is that we are forced to use a damaged form of empathy that what we understand as empathy is not is not correct this pervasive understanding of defeat what I'm calling defeat, you don't have to see it as defeat. God, I'm, I'm trying to talk you out of being defeated anyway. So if you don't see it as defeat, excellent. That bitterness instead of empathy, or the effect of all that bitterness on our empathy and how that empathy functions, that the most popular belief the most pervasive meme that stands against our faith is a belief in the non-existence another religion that is in direct what we see as opposition helped along by infighting we my side knows how to squabble as good as any team there is in the world from literal translationists of mimetic communication to the rise of papal dominance to allowing only the learned to understand what is a mimetic document mistranslated because they took it literally in all of this opposition Look at, look at your, our opposition, the idea that there is nothing, the faith that there is nothing, because they don't know any more than we know. They have faith. They project into that faith, and they have all the hallmarks of documentation that cannot be questioned, understandings that cannot be reasoned against all the hallmarks of that broken empathy are in both sides they're equally represented our opposition is reading the clues on this planet what used to be considered naturalism evidence of how our creator works and they are using it to try and understand what came before us they are describing a footprint of what came before. And in the words of the doctor, a footprint does not look like a boot, which explains a lot of the confusion in their data. And I think that one of the causes for our ruined understanding of empathy as we have it today is in that conflict both sides projecting into faith one side looking at a footprint one side projecting into the unknown we have discovered and continually discovered this footprint that looks nothing like what was actually there at the time and in fact gets the timing of those of what was there completely freaking weird when I talk about this damaged empathy I want you to understand that I have grown up in a world that has been affected by this damaged form of empathy see the the secret history of the world says that this world is hardening into materialism that something had to be done on the divine end of the scale to help us get through this material materialistically hardened era of our 
history of our existence on this planet. And the thing they chose to do was to give us empathy and a new understanding of love. Beyond 2,000 years ago, empathy and that un our current understanding of love does not exist. Julian James has done incredible work. Did, sorry, did incredible work. In trying to understand the boot that caused the footprint we are trying to read. And Dawkins made his discovery in a time, in a place, at a time in history where a misinterpretation, sorry Richard, you went with an absolute position. Any time you go from an absolutist position, you run the risk of this right here. And just missing the point and then eventually having it pointed out both of the, the 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 primary works that have led to my current understanding and my discovery Julian James's origin of consciousness and the breakdown of the bicameral mind and Richard Dawkins the selfish gene both of those works were fully grounded in this misunderstood system with heavy influence from a religion that is like any other religion. Knowing that and understanding how consciousness works is why I work so hard not to fit the traditional, I guess we call it traditional now, algorithmic mold. I understand that the algorithm we're using that you use to get to me is only making this damaged state of empathy worse for us. It is convincing us that we're already right and ruining our, ruining our chances to empathize with anybody who disagrees. Those are the forces in this world that I have to overcome and try to explain how we work. If I can overcome it, and I am by no means special or unique, there are others, many, many, many others like me who are coming to understand this. So this started off, it was going to be an angry rant, trying to show the common sense behind hate speech, particularly the hate speech of the term groomer. I have to try and surpass, try to understand the traps of this world, whether that be success, wealth, ego. When you get past the trap of wealth, let me tell you what the next biggest freaking trap, the most pervasive thing, is ego. Well, I've told you right here that if what you are seeing all the time is doing nothing but convincing you that you are right, you have absolutist views and you are right for me when I hear that all it says is I am a fool that's it if I say I am absolutist and I am right I am a fool all the avenues for growth outside of what you already know or believe to be true are closed off because you already are right I have that same problem to overcome because it is incredibly hard not to have entirely true full on faith that I am right. I'm not someone who wants to make these videos. 
So when my ego gets in there, it says, I need to be influential. I need to make a persuasive argument to try and explain this to people. Every time that happens in my brain, a red flag has to shoot up. I can't do that. If I want to do the work and keep it pure, I cannot try to influence you. If I want to fix the damaged sense of empathy that I learned by growing up in this world, I have to bypass that. So we are back at the beginning. And I'm even taking on more rantish tones in my narratization, my private narratizations. It is so pervasive. Stargate. I'm, I'm a science fiction guy and I'm getting towards the end of this. So I'm going to try and explain this so you can understand. All right. See, Stargate had this, this, this little episode where a supposedly advanced being was trying to explain enlightenment to someone in our state of consciousness and understanding. And what they said was the evil mind subconscious is too powerful for you to win against. The only way victory can be achieved is to deny it battle. That is a meme that stuck with me for a very long time. It's something I willingly replicated in order to grow my consciousness and understanding of the world. The definition of consciousness. You can't tell somebody like me that I have a subconscious and not expect me to go rooting around for it and trying to understand it, trying to lay it wide open so I can pick it apart and understand the mechanics of it, which in reality turns out to be understanding it and trying to make friends with it, trying to understand that oftentimes it is working at cross purposes because of our desires. Living in this world, in this existence, by design, gives you desires that are not healthy for you or the people that you have an effect on. That evil mind subconscious, which is essentially ego. I got another meme from Stargate. There was a... The, the, the old debate, is the future predetermined or is it random? And the meme I replicated or repeated from that show was that the future is predetermined by the character of those who shape it. That is something I repeated in my consciousness in order to grow. I used it to fuel the growth of my consciousness. We do this all the time, whether it's something our grandparents or parents said, something our pastor said, something our professor said. It is one of the memes I used to grow my consciousness. If I expect to shape anything about the future, I am taking on a responsibility. That meme illustrates that if I am going to take that responsibility on, my character is important. It is influential on how I shape. It is one of the reasons I am as cautious as I am, especially in my meditation, because there are too many factors that are only factors because they're a trap because they will lead, hopefully, to something that feeds my desire. This is why our empathy is damaged. Because the less responsibility we have for those desires, 
the more damaged our empathy becomes. When I asked, so I planned originally four weeks ago, originally I thought I was going to do a video on charity. And when I asked people I respect, uh, theological scholars, why is it that their book says that above all, empathy or, or charity, sorry, charity is the most important? Why do I see what I see in the world today if that is their most important precept? And their answer is, oh, charity doesn't mean what you expect it to mean in the biblical context. It just means love. That statement can only be made with a damaged understanding of empathy. With a misunderstanding of what love is is if I'm going to define that then my character has to be such that I don't intend to do harm because even without that intention of me purposely manipulating you to my way of thinking for my gain even without that with pure intentions anything I do can easily be changed to do incredible harm so the only choice I have in doing this work is to try and remain for myself of good intention. Enough harm will be done anyway. Anyways, we're over 40 minutes, so I... <laughs> The definition of consciousness. I'll just say it again and again and again and again until it's understood. Organic process. Memetically fueled. I am memetically fueled. I am using what our consciousness in its current state has available to try and grow and help you grow. Or memetically driven. Where... It just comes at you and you go along because it agrees with what you already believe. Leading to that part of you which I have been trying to talk to for 40 plus minutes. When I did it originally, that snap, that focus, that part of you that is paying attention to me now, that... That manipulation is meant to illustrate the part of you I am trying to describe. I am trying to do it with good intention because there's enough potential for harm already without me adding to it. Thank you for your time.